We're going to continue today looking at uh, the armor of God, part of a series, and uh, based on Ephesians 6.15. And it says, Stand firm then with your feet fitted with a readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. So the essence of today's teaching is how to live in peace. And I'm going to give you at the end like 10 keys to how to abide and live in peace and, and just have that kind of sense of well-being in your life. And I think we all want that today. You know, there's massive anxiety out there. You know, just see, you know, mental people are struggling with mental health. They're struggling with issues of peace, inner peace. There's a lack of peace. Even amongst Christians, there's a lack of peace. And this is, in a sense, warfare. This is, in a sense, God saying, hey, I've given you armor to put on. So the context is he's given us armor. We're to put it on. And we've, we've listened uh, to the other teachings, I hope. hope you've listened to them. If not, go back and listen to them, the other teachings on the armor of God. The last week we talked about righteousness. And um, we need to understand that we are righteous in Christ. But leading on from that, the next piece of armor that's attached um, to the whole armor. You have to have the whole armor. You see, if you don't have, if you have a piece of armor missing, then you're vulnerable. So God doesn't want us to be vulnerable. Our Father, our good, kind and loving Father, by His grace, wants us to live in peace. So it says, stand firm in a readiness. So that means be prepared because, guys, there's many battles in life. What The secret to life is learning to be at peace because of what Jesus has done. Learning to accept the finished work of the cross is sufficient for your peace. That you don't have to fret and worry and be anxious. Now you're talking like I'm talking as a person that has a propensity to worry and anxiety. I come out of that background where anxiety and worry are kind of like my fallen state in, in fact. But God in his grace over the years has shown me how to walk in peace and I have to walk in complete peace these days. There are times when I come under attack, you know, when you wake up in the middle of the night, like sweating, like three o'clock in the morning, and it's, oh God, all these things could happen. And I've learned to overcome that by abiding in the grace of God and the finished work of the cross and what Jesus has done for me and who he's made me to be through his sanctifying work of the cross. So guys, I just want to say to you, peace is possible. Peace in the mind and peace in the heart is possible and it's one of the secrets of victorious living is to learn to rest learn to be at peace in god and what he's done for us so everybody at the moment the anxiety is a big thing we see everything in the world around us being shaken as it says in i think it's hebrews chapter 12 i'm shaking everything um, you know some of the stuff we see going on everything we thought was solid financial institutions, institutions of the world we're seeing are being shaken. There's bizarre things going on. And many of us are battling with peace. We, we're asking, Lord, what about the future? What if this happens? But God wants us to have a sound mind. It says we have the mind of Christ, which is a sound mind. It's a mind that is peace. It's a mind that's free from ill health, free from fear thoughts that make us anxious and fearful see we are called to be free from anxiety worry and fear and by the way if you're not free from those things it's good news today you can become free but anxiety worry and fear lead to depression so much depression most depression is rooted in fear a spirit of fear it's rooted in anxiety. It's rooted in a deep set sense of purposelessness and hopelessness. But that's not the life we're called to live. We are called to live a life of victory. God has good plans for us, he says. Plans to prosper us and give us a future. So especially to you young people out there, I want to say God has good plans for you. It doesn't matter who you are. You were created with a purpose and you can be at peace. Now, one of the problems I've always suffered with is overthinking, being over, you know, I'm an engineer by training. And, uh, you know, we're, we're taught to analyze, we're taught to think through what if this, what if that. And you know what? You can end up with the paralysis of analysis. 
In other words, we think too much. Instead of being led by the Holy Spirit, we keep on asking, well, what if this happens? What if that happens? And there's an uncertainty in our lives. And I can tell you now, as a 64-year-old, I've been through all that. All those what ifs, 99.9% .9 of them never came to pass. So I want to I put your minds at rest by telling you that. Don't live by what if this happens or what if that happens. Be assured, most of those things do not happen. So we need to be able to trust in God. We need to be able to stand firm. By the way, it talks about the part of the armor of God that's peace, our shoes. So it's the, so what Paul saw is this Roman guard with shoes on. <laughs> he looked at those shoes and said, wow, those are, those are impressive shoes. And the Roman shoes of a Roman soldier had, had nails, like on the hobnails they called them. So that, so that he could stand firm. So that when the war was won on and the enemy was attacking, he wouldn't be pushed back. He wouldn't backslide. And those that, that what kept him in his position was understanding that he had peace with God. See, God has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. We have peace with God. And you stand firm in that fact that God is at peace with you. God's not angry with you. God's not out to get you. God's not there to afflict you or punish you. All that punishment was taken by Jesus. God has good plans for those who have accepted Jesus Christ. And in fact, for every person. But it comes about through Jesus. So the entryway to the good plans of God's life is through the gate Jesus Christ, who accepted him as Lord and Savior. And if you've never done that, I want to ask you today, if you're listening to this for the first time and you and you thinking, I don't know if I've given my life to Jesus. All you got to do is get down on your knees and say, Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my life as Lord and Savior. And your life will change. And let somebody know you've done that, by the way. You can contact me. But that's the, that's the start of true peace. You know, we minister all across the world to thousands of different people. And one of the biggest demonic issues going on is the issue of the lack of peace the issue of fear torment and anxiety and God wants us to be free from that and, and the things I'm sharing with you have been worked out over the years so we have a ministry of peace you know when when the shepherds in the field remember like at Christmas time we all celebrate the shepherds in the field and the angels came and their message was a good news message he said, I bring tidings of good news and peace towards mankind. You see, through Jesus, God brought peace between himself and sinful mankind. He said, through Jesus, I'm going to sanctify. So the word sanctified is to sanitize, to make you clean from all your sins. The sin is not going to be the issue anymore. The, Jesus, that behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And it says... It says in Hebrews that God remembers our sins no more. He no longer holds them against us. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. He doesn't relate to us on our basis of sin or sinlessness anymore. He sees us as righteous. He sees us as, as washed clean by Jesus, by the work of the cross. So our hope is in what Jesus did on the cross. So in Romans 10, 15, it says, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news and and that is referring to an old testament scripture in isaiah 52 7 which is about jesus the suffering servant the one who came to die and serve the world and die for our sins and in there it says blessed are those who bring good news of peace and our god reigns hallelujah our god reigns <laughs> it means we can have peace because god reigns it what it means is God is in control. God is in control of your life and God is in control of my life. And that gives me a peace that passes understanding. You see, I've been reconciled with God, been made right with God, been made righteous, right with God, justified. We talked about it last week in the breastplate of righteousness, just as if I've never sinned. Romans 5.1, it says, I've been justified. I have peace with God. I have, now I have grace and by faith I have hope of glorious things to come. 
Oh, <laughs> that's such good news. Glory. We have hope because we've been justified. We've been made clean. Our sins are forgiven. We have peace with God. And now God wants to bless us. God wants to take us into the glory of his kingdom of his son, Jesus. <laughs> it's, it's good news. It's such joyful good news. You know, I love I love sharing these verses. I'm preaching to myself. <laughs> I get excited. I get joyful when I hear the good news. So we can be at peace. We can overcome the uncertainty of the world. You see, we have a certainty that God is working for our good in all things. That's what it says in, 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 Romans, in Romans 8. In all things, he's working for our good because we are his children. And he's our, our father. He's a good father, good dad. Abba, Hebrew word for for Abba means dad. And that's what we are called to call God. Romans 8, 14. Abba, Abba. <laughs> like a little child. <laughs> Remember standing outside of a uh, a, a Jewish um, creche or kindergarten once. And just listening. To, I was with my friend. They were there to, we were there to collect his kids. And all the kids were crying out. When they saw their dads, they were like, Abba, 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 Abba. And it's amazing, but God uses that same words in, in Romans 8, 14. He says that we, that we cry out, Abba, Abba. See, God's our good dad. He's our good father. He wants good things for us. So we can be at peace with God. We can be at peace knowing that Jesus has done everything necessary to qualify us, to make us sons of God, to empower us by the Spirit. He's put his Spirit in us. <laughs> it's fantastic news. It's good. This is good news, people. But let me just say something else. It says Romans 16, 20, there is war that goes on. So in the midst of war, we are at peace about ourselves and our relationship with God. But Romans 16, 20 says the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. See, although we are at peace about ourselves, our future, our well-being, our health, our prosperity and money in the bank, our business, our family, we need to be at peace and resting in that. The rest of the Lord is, is being at peace. It's not stuff we have to do. What we need to be doing is hearing the Holy Spirit and obeying when he prompts us to do things. Because, And that's my testimony. The Lord years ago set up things. He said, hey, Gary, be at peace, but I want you to do this, this, and this, and that will provide for your future. And for the last 25 years, I've lived off those those uh, investment, those business businesses I set up. And I've had great peace. I've been all over the world teaching and preaching, but I've been at peace about my family. I've been at peace about my income. I've been at peace about my health because I know <laughs> that God's my father and he loves me because I love him. So it's good news. But there is a battle that goes on that we crush Satan, the God of peace working through us, Jesus Christ, crushes satan crushes the evil one the demons the satanic plans see we don't we don't fear when we do that stuff we don't have to fear when we come against evil and confront it because we have peace that god's on our side so to finish off i want to just you you might be saying you know gary's all well and good talking about peace but i don't feel peace i feel anxious i'm worried things are going wrong i want to just share some keys to peace 10 points quickly so first key to peace is, is is to focus on jesus fix your eyes on jesus and what he did for you on the cross everything is about jesus we now live for jesus so jesus is the lord of lords and king of kings and we are called to fix our eyes on jesus we are and mysteries we're seated with him in the heavenly realms we live in him and he lives in us Establish yourself in the, in the Word of God, in the promises that are in the Word. As I said, um, you heard the teaching the other week about Psalm 91, that every promise is yes and amen in Jesus. It's not yes and no. Every promise. But if you don't know the promises of God, where He promises to give us health, where He promises to prosper us, where He promises to deliver us from evil, where He promises that our offspring will be blessed, if you don't know those promises... It's hard to live them out because one of the things is the Holy Spirit. This is point number three. 
allow the Holy Spirit to control your mind. So Romans 8, 6 says, the, the mind controlled by the Spirit is life, abundant life, and peace. And my question is, is your mind controlled by the Spirit? Have you yielded control to the Holy Spirit? Because it says the mind controlled by the Spirit. You see, I don't let my mind be controlled by my thoughts. I yield them to, and, and when I get thoughts, I say, Holy Spirit, is this you? And I yield, I, I choose, I say every day when I get up, I say, Holy Spirit, fill me afresh today with the love and peace and glory of God. He never leaves me, but it's a fresh yielding every day to be dependent on the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, take, take captive all these thoughts, all these negative things. So allow your mind to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will remind you. It says, Jesus said, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit and he will remind you of the things I taught you. He wants to remind you of the promises in the word, the promises of victory, the promises that Jesus is coming again, the promises that the people of God will reign and rule on the earth. So again, let the Holy Spirit remind you of the word of God. Get the word, read the Bible, believe the Bible. And, and again, remember, we are New Testament Christians. We, we believe that every promise is yes and amen. Everything promised in the Old Testament is now ours through Christ because he fulfilled the law and the prophets. It says in um, 1 Peter 5, 7, cast your burdens onto Jesus for he cares for you. Remember that song when we get, cast your burdens onto Jesus for he cares for you. What craziness, eh? <laughs> See, we've got to be childlike in our attitude towards God. God said you've got to be like a child to enter the kingdom of God. It's because children have childlike trust, childlike simplicity. This stuff I'm preaching in and the way I share, you know what? I share in the word of God with you. That's all I'm doing. See, it's not my opinions don't matter. What matters is what does the word of God say and how do we apply that by the Holy Spirit into our life? And that's why, you know, when it says, cast your burdens onto Jesus, you can do that. You can literally pray it. Lord, I'm worried about my finances. I now cast this burden onto you. And I ask you to guide me, Holy Spirit. It's actually, uh, that's a fulfillment, by the way, of Psalm 55. Uh, it says, and, and that's linked to righteousness. So you cast your burdens onto Jesus, knowing that you are righteous. So the, the, the fifth, the sixth point is be established in righteousness. Know, remember last week we talked about the breastplate of right. Know that you have right standing with God. Nothing else qualifies you except grace and believing in the goodness of God. So it's a gift of grace. You are right with God through Jesus Christ, the finished work of the cross. Matthew 6, 25 says, don't worry. Don't worry. And it goes into a whole thing. Worry is going to do you no good. Now, I'm a warrior. <laughs> Not a warrior like with a spear and sword, but like, well, I am. But, but I also worry about things. It's one, of, it's, it's one of the areas that the devil comes against me. And I have to have trained my mind not to worry. See, it says and verse 33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So you see, when, when you seek the kingdom, when you live for the kingdom, when you live to advance the name of Jesus and his glory, and you understand his righteousness, his right standing given to you as a child of God, then worry goes out the window. Then you know, I've, God's got good plans for me. No matter what happens in these times of crisis, God is going to see me through. Sure, I might go through some difficulties, but God is going to see me through. God's got right things for me because he's made me righteous and I'm in the kingdom of God now. And don't be anxious about anything. Point number eight, Philippians 4, 6. I know this off by of, of heart. Rejo See, I can say it off by heart. Rejoice in the Lord. I say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all for the Lord is near. And, and do not be anxious about anything, but when all things in prayer and petition and thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your heart and mind in Christ. I encourage you, learn that off by heart. Repeat it when you're feeling anxious. Do what it tells you to do. Point number nine, focus on what is good. Let's stop focusing on the negative. Focus on the good things in life. That's Philippians 4, 8. Whatever is good, noble, excellent, praiseworthy, focus on such things. Being negative gets you nowhere but anxious. 
Finally, not finally, sorry, next point. <laughs> Trust in Abba Father. We talked about Abba as our good father. When you know he's your dad, you can be at peace. And the final point is remain in grace. Legalism, legalism is demonic and it robs us of the blessing. Get fully into grace. Meditate on grace. What that means is, is read all the scriptures on grace. Learn them off by heart. You are in grace. You are under God's divine favor and blessing and empowering by the Holy Spirit. So peace, definition of peace is a tranquil state of being. And the Holy Spirit gives us peace. Galatians 5.22 says, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. And it goes on. You see, it's something that, that when you allow in the Holy Spirit to control your mind and your thinking and to lead you day by day, you enter into a, a peace that passes all understanding. For the kingdom of God is righteousness, joy and peace by the Holy Spirit. It's God's free gift to you. So I'm going to just pray for you now, but I just encourage you, if you like these videos, even if you don't like them, someone else is going to like them. <laughs> Subscribe by clicking the button down in the right-hand corner, the red button. Please share with your friends. <laughs> I hope this is encouraging to you. You know, this comes out of like almost 30 years in the mission field and ministry field. Um, this is good news. I want to encourage you. God has good plans for your life. So Holy Spirit, I just pray now over every person to be at peace. I take authority in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over all anxiety, fear, and worry. I bind every spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. And I declare divine peace and order in everybody's mind. We have the mind of Christ. <laughs> And may the joy of the Lord be your strength. Even now, may joy come upon you. I'd break all depression in the name of Jesus. Why do I say I do that? Because Jesus has given me the authority to speak in his name. We are all ministers of the Lord. We take authority. We don't have to ask God to do it. He says, you go and do these things in my name. Hallelujah. <laughs>